Hello, it's Farmer Jay and welcome back to the farm. The long-awaited patch 1.2 is finally out. And I think a lot of people are very happy that it is finally out. I guess what I will do is I'll hop back into the game. And then we can have a, I'll read through the patch notes and I can show you anything interesting as we go. So changes and improvements. Adjusted contract vehicles accordingly as some had wrong tools for the job at hand. Okay, so that means you now get the right tools. Um, you don't end up with a trailer that can't handle a certain type of product when you're supposed to be doing a contract. Adjusted prices for used vehicle sale. I can't say I've noticed anything different there. It's still 61 and 44% off, but we don't have a lot on sale today. Adjusted repair costs. I did notice those are down significantly. However, repair, repaint costs are still very high. Uh, ridge markers on cedars no longer dig up stones. They have changed the display of the number of days. So before, it would say I'm on two-day months. It would say April 1st and then April 16th. It now tells you which day you're on, whether the first day or the second day. So if you change that to three day months, it would then say April 3rd when you went into the next day and so on. Change price fluctuation display so it actu actually accurately reflects the historical prices for the last 12 months. It's not written very well. Uh, we can take a look at that. So canola show price fluctuation so that's what it did over the last 12 months it's no longer um i guess just a random guess as to what's going to happen fixed an issue where ai workers weren't able to use and turn plows correctly fixed an issue where leased machinery for contract would disappear once accepted Fixed an issue where picking up objects as a client in multiplayer could crash the game. I haven't tried multiplayer, so I don't know. Fixed an issue where playing with a custom season length could cause issues in weather forecast or indefinite rain snow. Fixed an issue where some contracts were unable to be finished. Now that's a huge one. Um, that means we can now hopefully finish all contracts including the train contracts which we were never able to do before fixed an issue where the ai worker would continuously get paid even though the game was paused they fixed an issue where the game wouldn't start on certain intel gpus as far as nvidia gpus goes they fixed an issue where dlss could result in some ghosting artifacts and they fixed an issue where DLSS on supported cards could lead to a black screen. Fixed an issue where the big bag lifter could cause the game to freeze or crash. Fixed an issue where vehicles would get duplicated when reset. Fixed an issue with animals running around the place when they shouldn't. Uh, if you're not familiar with that one, sometimes when you fed the animals in a pen. It didn't happen with cows, but it happened with pigs they would randomly run outside of the uh, outside of the pen. It was quite funny to watch. So it's a bit of a shame they fixed that one. Um, fixed an issue with the map filter overlays displaying need plowing and need lime status incorrectly. Uh, this is big because if you look at the overall map now, um, if you remember the whole map was red, and said it needed plowing it now actually only shows you the fields that need plowing fixed income of placeables to be consistent per year now shown as income per month i'm not sure how i didn't have any 
placeables that made money, like electricity generators or solar panels, so I'm not sure how that was or was not working. Um, fixed an issue with emptying of bunker silos. That was a big problem a lot of people had, where they had a certain amount of silage left in the silo, and they had to use the landscaping tool to empty it out. Fixed loan interest rates over a whole year. Fixed manure heap and manure heap extension. They are now working as expected. I can quickly show you that one. Um... We have our manure heap extension here, and it is actually adding manure to it. Fixed reset of collectibles after they had all been collected. Well, I never had that problem, unfortunately, but I guess people were able to collect some of the collectibles two or three times. Uh, fix the Rostle Mash Nova pipe and loading effect. Fixed seed usage when direct sown grass. Uh, we covered this in one of my other videos. But um, you'd go two or three tanks full of seed to just seed a small field of grass. Fixed selling point prices and price fluctuations. <coughs> Fixed switched field numbers and field numbers on Elm Creek. Um, I think it was these two, 42 and 43, that were reversed. So you'd end up with a contract saying harvest such and such on field 43, which was actually this field. So when you arrived there, you would find that there was not the correct product to be harvested. Um... Fix the rear, rear paddle buttons on the Logitech G920 not being properly bound to the Xbox. Fix tree growth to be the same independent of the length of a month. Um, not quite sure how that works now. I haven't experimented too much with trees. Fix various issues with manual shifted tractors. Improved combine headers on sloping terrain. There was a problem. I had that where you would harvest a field and the header would not harvest everything because of the slope. So you'd have to come at it from a different angle. So it's great that they fixed that, especially as that was one of the main features they said was going to be uh, new to the game. Improved cotton bale loading. I didn't have any problems with loading cotton bales. Improved behavior of multi-axle trucks. Uh, hopefully that means that the, uh, especially the Max, I didn't have a problem with the, which one was it? The Fiegel? Um, mm, sorry, the Man. I didn't have a problem with that one, but I did have a lot of wheel slip with the other trucks. Um, and I know a lot of people did too, because that kept popping up in the forums. Improved pallet handling and performance. Um, what they've essentially done is they have changed the size of the pallets. Improved in-game help texts. Reduced AI worker costs all around. Yes, I've noticed it's a little bit cheaper now to hire a worker. Um, fix the Arcusen Multipack D14 bale unloader. Um, that's the small one that stacked small bales. I'm not sure what the problem was with that, but I'm guessing um, there were problems reported. Added an ability to enlarge Mod Hub screenshots when viewing the mod details. Um, added the ability to remove buildings on all four farms on Elm Creek map. That one is actually pretty handy. If we go to, uh, I have a vehicle down here. I guess I do. Um, where is my farm? There it is. So we'll just go to the construction menu. And if I go over to this farm now, I could hit the demolish button 
and the whole farm will disappear all of the buildings it won't give you any money when you sell it uh, the old barn has now this one here it's still here has become a placeable so you can actually place it around the the farm uh, this one will sell for money because it's still a placeable the only problem with these farms being sold is you probably want to come along want to come along and do some landscaping Uh, they've added a mobile home as a placeable. Um, so if you're starting from either not new farmer mode, but the medium or hard difficulties, um, you can now place it. It's not going to let me do it because I still have my farmhouse. But you can place a cheap mobile home, which is a fraction of the cost of the farmhouse. And that will become your living quarters. Um, added option for free placement of placeables. Um, I don't know if it's going to show me. We'll have to turn on the help menu. So if you press V, it will toggle that mode on or off. It will give you a warning and it'll tell you that it may cause issues with functionality of objects or vehicles, but allows more freedom of placement. So in other words, you can now put two buildings end to end and you won't get a collision error I'm not going to demonstrate it because I don't want to mess up my game added the option for higher fuel usage if you go I didn't want to queue I wanted to do this if you go to your general settings no, not general settings, game settings. Um, you can now select low fuel usage, normal fuel usage, or high fuel usage. If you feel the tractors are sipping diesel a little too uh, gently. Added the option to place vines and olives with parallel snapping. This is a big one. Let me go over to this farm because I know I have an empty field here. Just trying to find something that'll let me tag it. So I redid this vineyard of my olive grove. Um, But if you're not, if you're anything like me, the last time you placed vineyards or anything like that, um, you didn't always end up with a straight line. Orchards, vineyards. So same as you normally did, you start somewhere and you try and place the line as straight as possible. Now the pole would automatically appear And you will get an almost perfectly aligned vineyard. Um, this is pretty apparent up here. <coughs> if you look at my old vineyards, I had big, uh, because they weren't perfectly lined up, you'd end up with gaps with soil in the middle. So that's definitely very handy. Uh, once this harvest season is done, I will be replacing my not properly lined vineyards with um, the new snapping tool. Just as a note, depending on where you placed your vineyards, you do need to recreate um, a field because uh, it will probably tell you the ground needs to be plowed. Added yield potential and weed removal recommendation to the field info. Um, I'm experimenting with this one. So as you can see in this field, it tells us that we have 
a yield bonus of 98% because everything's been done. It was mulched. It was limed. It was fertilized. It was rolled. It was seeded. The proper process. Now, it says um, over here, the weeds are just starting to grow and you can remove them with a weeder. So I kind of came down this side of the field and removed them with the weeder. Um, there's nothing to grow, there's nothing to show. So uh, does that mean you could remove weeds ahead of time? Um, I think so. I don't think I have any weeds left. Um, the field info now also displays the fact that, oops, you forgot to do something, so you're going to lose a 5% yield bonus. I forgot to roll um, after seeding, and I did not mulch. So there's my 5% penalty to that. Um, no, I don't have any weeds. Um, the nice thing it will do now when it tells you you have weeds in a field like you saw with the, we'll go back here. It tells you you can remove them with a weeder at this stage. Depending on the stage of growth the weeds are at, it will recommend the tool you should use. Um, so for example, if the weeds are past what used to be 50%, it will now tell you to use a hoe. If the weeds are fully grown, it will tell you to use um, a sprayer with chemical herbicide in it. License plates on Erlingrad are now fully customizable. I thought they always were. I didn't have a problem with that. Um, there are still a couple of known issues. Foliage in the distance can flicker in weird colors on certain hardware setups. Random crashes when hiring an AI worker. Um, random cut down trees exploding visually in bizarre graphical glitches. Uh, I've only had that happen once and I've yet to be able to duplicate it, but basically the tree just became a big blur in the middle of the field. Um, rare issue where the game cannot be saved on the Xbox. And contract bonus yield is too high. Enjoy it while it lasts is their last comment in the patch notes. So I guess we are going to get bonus crops for now. Um, so instead of, I think it was, you had to turn in 75% of a crop to get uh, before it would start generating money. I'm guessing that number is lower at the moment. There are a couple of other issues that they don't talk about. Um, go back to the main farm here. These info buttons. They will open the help menu and they will tell you different things. Um, that one tells you about arable farming. There's another one. I don't remember where it is around here. We'll go to the vehicle shop because I know there's one there. And if you open this help menu, it'll tell you about spending money. Well, we all know that's easy enough to do in the game. If you don't like that, and I don't particularly like that, um, crop destruction, field stone, da 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 da. Automatic engine start, fuel, no, it must be under game settings. Help window on if you want. Colorblind mode is off. Uh, we want zone. Info triggers. There we go. Turn that off. And there it's gone. So you don't have these annoying orange question marks all over the place. Some more unannounced features they have. 
if we look at our cows and our chickens, it will now tell you, uh, it told you their age before. So these chickens have just reproduced and they are eight months old. <coughs> the cows are al almost at puberty, which means they're almost at 18 months, which is the reproduction age for the animals. Um, I can show you this one because I have cows. Um, it, and it's the same for horses and sheep and uh, other animals. Very handy because you now know what age to buy. It makes a little bit more sense. So if we click on Holsteins, um, these ones are basically newborn calves. The cows will reach puberty at 18 months, which means they will then start breeding. And it takes 10 months for a cow to breed uh, and give birth to a new calf. And that's pretty much the same for all the cows. Um, let's go to the chicken coop. You actually have to go to the animal screen to be able to check this. And so for a chicken, um, the mature chickens you buy are six months old, which is puberty. And their gestation period is two months. So every two months, they will give birth to a new batch of chicks. Or you can buy the chicks directly from the dealer um, for $5. My chickens in this pen are only worth $25, even though they are at <coughs> uh, puberty. Um, there are a couple of other important changes. They talk about pallets. Um, oh, crap. I thought they'd fix this. But they, um, pallets now hold double the amount they did before. So the, uh, the honey pallets, I think, were 250 or 300 liters. They now hold double the amount. They're still too heavy to pick up by hand. Lettuce pallets. None of these are full, so I'm letting them fill up. Um, but we have a full one down here, which is now 500 liters instead of the 200 liters. Basically, what that means is instead of having pallets all over the place, I'm just going to remove this one and see if a new one spawns. Yeah, there we go. I thought they might fill, um, so I left them there. And these are now 500 liters versus the old ones, which were 150 liters. So you ended up with hundreds of strawberry pallets or lettuce pallets and the worst one being tomatoes. Um, so because the pallet size has been increased, you now don't have pallets spawning all over the place all of the time. There is a bug that, speaking of pallets, that people have reported in the forums. Um... We can pick these ones up. And it's specific to do with the Manitou forklift loader. Let's see if we can line this up properly. It's hard with the trees in the way. So let's do this one here. Um... Okay, I'm not having that problem. 
but some people have been having problems with the Manitou when it lifts something up, doing all sorts of crazy things. Let me just check and see. Let me move my truck of flour out of the way. Um, and that's another change that they've made uh, that they don't talk about <coughs> is to um, the way production cycles work. Uh, let's see if this is going to go crazy on me. Come on. Nope, I'm not having the problem that some people are having. Oh, there it goes. Yep. So the Manitou does go crazy. Where that pallet went, nobody knows. Um, so that's another new bug that's being created that people don't know about. Lastly, let's look at production chains. If you remember, production chains um, had so many cycles per hour and a production cost per hour. They now have cycles per month and a production cost per month. So you will get the same amount of production from a factory in a 28 day month as you would in a one day month i guess this is to balance it out for players playing at different lengths because if you were playing on two or three day seasons you would get quite a bit more finished product than you would um if you were just playing on one day seasons where you're only 24 hours and because it was based on an hourly cycle yeah so somebody who was playing on a three or four day month would make a lot more money. So those are um, the major changes. Um, there are a couple of things that I think are cute. And I just want to see what it does with the weeds. So we will sleep until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. You've now got a sleeping icon. Oh, and it's raining. Good thing it's not harvest season. Oh, we'd get nothing done. Um, so I thought the sleeping icon was kind of cute. Don't know where I got the $90 of property income from because I do not have anything that generates money. Um, here we are, weeds. So, cornfield. So weeds are still small, and it recommends that we use a weeder. Um, I did weed this field. So let me just have a quick zip over there and see why it's um, displaying weeds. So these are medium weeds uh, because we used a high speed cultivator or light cultivator on this field and it's recommending that we use a hoe. Um, I bet my bee production is really messed up now. Yeah, I've got two pallets on top of each other. Um, and let's see what I have in terms of... So lettuce, yeah, you can see the double the size. Um, anything else that I can think of that's changed that I have noticed since I've been playing? 
Nope. Although the dairy does seem to be outputting a lot more butter than it is cheese or other products. But again, that's your production cycle per month. So, those are the changes to patch 1.2. I hope you found them informative. And I hope it hasn't created too many more bugs for you like it has for some people. In the next video, we will examine and take a look at the free content update that came with patch 1.2. And this is why it was such a large patch, because they gave away quite a bit of equipment. So we will see you in that video shortly. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, it helps the channel out. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified of when new videos are posted. Take care and keep it between the rows.